Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the final demo of our product, Soccer Glance. Um, we are Group 5, supervised by Dr. Mustafa Youssef, and we're going to be um, presenting our real-time football text highlights generator. So here's a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing in this presentation, starting that with the problem we saw, or in other words, the opportunity that we saw. Uh, so football is the biggest sport in the world, and as football fans, we're all familiar with the various mobile applications and websites that provide minute-by-minute -minute updates of the important events happening in a football match. These updates are usually very descriptive and detailed, and the reason they're so good is because they're usually manually generated by reporters. And as you can probably imagine, this can be very expensive for the platforms that intend to offer this feature, because not only do they have to pay the salaries of these reporters, sometimes they actually send them to the stadium as a way of reducing latency. Another problem is that this solution is not really scalable because there are hundreds of leagues and hundreds of matches being played every single day. And it's not realistic to expect these platforms to hire hundreds of reporters to uh, document every single match as it's happening. And lastly, there's huge competition in this area because uh, that makes it very difficult for the newer applications to compete with the already well-established ones that can um, afford to provide these features. Uh, these are all challenges that we saw and our product provides a solution to all these challenges by offering an AI powered tool that delivers real time updates on significant events occurring in a football match on a minute by minute basis. Our product is packaged as an API, which makes it very simple to integrate into existing systems and existing mobile applications and websites, and it provides uh, an affordable and efficient updates to football fans worldwide. Uh, using our product is very simple. The user simply purchases access to the, the API, and then they can integrate it into their platform, and then they simply just get real-time updates for the selected match. Uh, they can choose to display the updates in however way they please, and this is just one example of how they can display it. In the next section, we're going to be discussing previous work that inspired us and that we initially decided to build on. Okay, so for the previous work, we started... Uh... Uh, we started last semester by a machine learning model that extracts the actions from uh, the soccer game and generated to the user as highlights. So the state of art uh, we started with was a machine learning model called NetVlad++. It processed the video and turns it into frames, then generate, extract the feature, and then generate the highlights for the, for the user. Um, we built on a pipeline for this model this semester, so we started to make it real time, which will be discussed through the next slides. Uh, we tried to improving the output of the real time and generate more highlights. So what we 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 were mainly doing through the this semester, we first we started to research for a new approach to generate the highlights. Second, we started uh, adopting new models for higher accuracy. But then we stopped uh, and we decided not to continue with this approach because we find that uh, the action spotting model has some issues. First, it didn't provide us with the user-friendly output we desired at the beginning. It relied heavily on video processing, which caused a lot and caused large delays, and it uh, has lower accuracy. And for seeking higher accuracy, the more complex models uh, cause uh, delay and uh, uh, it's very expensive for uh, performance and resources. Now let's talk about our approach to making this product to come to life. So this is this is our initial architecture. It starts with the audio visual stream, which is basically just the live football match. And then the video stream goes through a real time video processor that extracts the audio chunks and video chunks respectively. And it keeps extracting these chunks as long as the stream is online. The video chunk goes through a video, um, uh, an offline action spotting model, which outputs the action detected. And the audio chunk goes through a transcription model. The audio chunk is basically just the English commentary of the match. It goes through a transcription model and the transcript chunk along with the detected action both go, uh, go through a natural language processing model, which then uh, outputs the detailed action in text format. And of course, uh, this is sent to the front end or the mobile or web application through our API. However, so this part, circle part, is the part that Yora was just describing. And as she mentioned, uh, after lots and lots of experimentation, we found that this part is, was actually slowing the overall system down. It was causing it to have less accuracy. So we decided to get rid of this part. And now this is our uh, last, latest architecture. It relies mainly on the, uh, on the audio stream that is being processed by the real-time audio processor. And in the next few sections, we're gonna be discussing each module of this architecture, starting with the real-time video processor. 
Okay, so uh, let's start with the first part of the architecture, which is the real-time uh, processor. So, um, sorry. Um, so what makes our product different and special is that we uh, process the matches and we generate the highlights in real time. So we basically take the stream and we process the audio in order to uh, uh, store every chunk of the audio in audio files. And we experimented with uh, different uh, audio chunks in order to find the chunk sizes that uh, the chunk size that has the best uh, or give the best uh, results. So we found that 90 second chunks uh, gave the best results as they're short enough to be in real time, but also long enough to have meaningful information to generate a highlight from. Um, so the chunks are stored in a directory that acts as a chunk queue. And once a chunk is ready, it is passed on to the next stage in the pipeline in order to be processed. And this is basically repeated until no more chunks are left, which means that the audio stream uh, has ended. Um, so for the next part of the architecture, which is the real-time transcription model, first let me start by telling you what our goal is and why we decided to use audio transcription. So our goal is um, to maximize the accuracy of the generated highlights as well as generated, uh, generate them in the shortest uh, time possible or with, uh, with the shortest uh, latency possible. Um, so processing audio would definitely take less time than processing video. And also the events that are happening in the match, especially the most important events are stated in the commentary. So we decided to make use of the commentary and uh, generate uh, transcripts uh, in order to process every transcript chunk and uh, see whether they have any important events or highlights or not. So uh, let me tell you more about the model that we used for transcription. So the model uh, we used is an open source model by OpenAI and it was trained on 680,000 hours of online multilingual data. And um, it handles various uh, accents and, uh, and background noise. And it's also able to transcribe uh, different languages and translate. However, the translation might decrease the accuracy. So we decided to like uh, avoid that risk. And uh, our product is intended only for matches with English commentary in order to uh, prevent the need to translate or decrease the accuracy in any way, and this maximizes our accuracy. So uh, as you can see below, the input would basically be an audio chunk, and uh, the model would proce process it, and the output would be a text file contain containing the transcript of, that, uh, of the commentary in that audio chunk. And now for the next part of the architecture, which is the NLP model. Um, so, of course, we need a language model to process the transcripts to find if we have any important uh, actions happening or not. So, uh, the, the language model uh, that we decided to work with is a GPT-3 model. So, um, the language model is tasked with uh, outputting any important events happening in the transcript chunks. And uh, the highlights are generated by this model in an engaging and descriptive way. And uh, to illustrate, we basically take the text file, which was the output of the previous uh, stage, which is the transcript, and we process the transcript in order to find if there are any important uh, events or highlights happening, which is the output of this model. Uh, and this is just to uh, show you a bit more clearly how the process goes. So we generate the audio chunks in real time with the corresponding transcript and the highlight chunks. And uh, this is all done in real time. And this is an example of uh, a transcript uh, from the commentary. And as you can see, the highlight uh, was able to detect the important action that happened in the transcript, which is that Fred scored a goal. And now for the next part, which is the results. OK, now that we have our results, we need to verify those results. So in order to verify those results, we have to compare our we have to compare our generated highlights with our ground truth, which is a list of actions. So the first step is that we need to extract actions from the generated highlights. Each predicted action uh, would have a type and an associated game time indicating when that action took place. And now that we have our predicted actions, the second step is that we need to process those results. And what we do here is that we simply average the neighboring actions and meaning that actions of the same type that occurred within a similar or uh, close game times, as you can see in, this, in the slide. Uh, the last step is that we compare and calculate. We go over the predicted actions and if the predicted action is in the ground truth file, we will consider that action to be correct. So after doing that, we've reached an accuracy of about 70%. While this may seem low, we believe that more importantly that um, 
it can be improved. There's room uh, for improvement, especially in the way that we're measuring the accuracy. And second thing uh, that we want to say is that um, in practice, however, and the actions or the products or the highlights that were generated um, were more than usable and commercially viable. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to the product overview. Um, we'll take a look at an abstract view of our product in action with all the key stakeholders involved. On the left-hand side, we have the content providers who will supply us with streamed real-time video content through a link. The link will then be validated and fed into our system. Uh, and using our LLM model of choice, we process the match in real time and extract the text highlights in JSON format. Um, then these highlights upon creation are then provided to football applications and sports news outlets through our REST uh, API in an efficient and seamless uh, manner. Uh, now to bring our idea to life, we've designed and implemented a well-structured database schema that prioritizes user, uh, user experience and enables us to implement robust uh, authentication and authorization um, measures to ensure a secure uh, and seamless experience for our users. Uh, our database schema comprises of seven tables. The user table houses all the necessary information to authenticate the user, uh, determine the degree of privileged access they have, and of course, retain any useful information. Uh, then, of course, we have the league match and highlights tables, and they're used in tandem to house all the relevant information about any given match on our platform. Um, then we have the subscription and subscription type tables, which work together to maintain a comprehensive record uh, of which users have subscribed to specific plans. Uh, lastly, we have our register match table, which plays a crucial role in uh, our in-house webhook implementation. Uh, now for a tech stack, we uh, for the front end, we use Bootstrap as a base for styling and then SAS whenever we needed to dive deeper and make some custom changes. Uh, we use JavaScript for animation and front end API calls. Uh, we implemented our API using the Django REST framework and then uh, use the state of the art uh, JSON web tokens or JOT uh, for authentication. For a back end, um, we also used uh, uh, Django and we used Engine X for real time for accepting real time video streams through our RTMP. Um, we also used Docker in preparation for deployment. Uh, we used MySQL uh, for its performance, especially when handling the simple queries, which uh, uh, were prevalent throughout our product. Now let's take a look at the API endpoints, which are thoroughly documented in our API product documentation. Uh, firstly, the shared endpoints are going to be used by all types of users to uh, authenticate to later use any of the two uh, endpoints. The private endpoints allow us to add highlights, change scores, and match status. Um, and they're specifically designed for usage uh, by the content providers and us at Soccer Glance. Uh, the public endpoints are split into two categories. The first uh, is the webhook implementation register for match, uh, which is used to provide the registered clients uh, with highlights as soon as they're generated without the need, uh, as soon as they're generated through uh, the target uh, uh, webhook URL, which they provide upon registration without the need for any requests. Uh, the remaining endpoints are for used for retrieving different types of matches based on specific parameters which are outlined in our documentation. So now we'll go over our product in actions. This is basically the demo for our product. Uh, this is a recorded video. So what we have here is that our product consists of mainly two components, a model server and the API server. The, the model server, which you ca guys can see here, is basically responsible for receiving the stream, as you guys can see the penalty. It's also responsible for transcribing the audio, generating the chunks, and generating the highlights. Um, what you see here is somewhat a front end to what's going behind or what's happening behind the scenes in the server itself. We thought this is only for demonstration purposes as we thought this is the best ways this is the best way we can show what's happening. You'll see that a highlight is generated and if we'll zoom in into the highlight, we'll find that the highlight actually describes the penalty we just saw um, in like a concise way. The second component we'll go over is the API itself. We'll start with the home page. Uh, the API is basically the main product that will, the client will be interacting with. Uh, it's responsible for communicating uh, with the database, updating the database, communicating with the clients and sending them highlights and also all, and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> we'll go over the interface real quickly. We'll start with the API documentation. Any good API needs a good documentation. Uh, in fact, it's vital or crucial for an API. Our, docu our documentation is organized. It's also industry standard. Uh, each endpoint has a clear explanation of what it does, as well as having both input and output examples. So it's really good. Uh, we'll move on to the pricing. Uh, as well. 
uh, in a second. Any good API also needs a good pricing page. Uh, <laughs> this is only for demonstration purposes as well to illustrate the business model, so to speak. Um, we just wanted to show that we have different plans that are custom tailored custom tailored for the client needs. Uh, each plan providing different services. This is the team page as well. This is us. Uh, moving on, we'll see what a client can do once he registers, assuming he picked a subscription plan. So a client will go to the registration form and fill in the details. After filling in the details, the client will be redirected to the home page. Of course, this registration form has both front end and back end validation, meaning that if you input wrong pass or a simple password or invalid formats, it will tell you. Now he was redirected to the home page. We'll shake the first page. The nav bar will update, showing new options. We'll shake the premium matches page. This shows a dashboard where the client can interact with the upcoming matches, copy the match ID, and register for any match. Once he registered, the client will start receiving the highlights associated with that match as well, uh, yeah, on the, tar on the client target link. Uh, we'll also shake the schedule match button on the top right. Once the client presses that button, he will, will be redirected to a form. This basically allows the client to schedule and process their own custom matches. He will just fill the data related to that match, the match link, which this match is being streamed to, the team names, as well as the league, as well as the date and time of the match. Um, once he adds the match, we can go to the custom matches page and we'll find that the match has been added. The custom match page is also a dashboard that contains the custom match that contains matches that the custom matches, similar to the premium matches page. And the last part of the demo is basically showing a use case or an example of how a client would use our application from start to finish. The first part is to register. And uh, the most important thing to note here is the target link. The target link will be the link that the client would use to receive the highlights. And then he will go to the premium matches page, register for a match. The match is live, if you guys can check that. And if we go to the model server, we'll find that the match is, re is already being processed. If we head back to the client application, once the highlight is being generated, it will be received. And that also will be reflected in the model server. We'll find that the highlight is actually received. And that's it for the demo. Okay, so this is an so this is an overview of how we managed to turn our idea into a commercial product, uh, which is naturally our environment outcome. Uh, so we started with the problem of uh, providing live updates for football matches more efficiently. Our solution was uh, to create an ABI-based tool that produces match highlights in the form of text, uh, while reducing costs and improving on other existing methods. So the business model we have settled on for our services is a subscription-based one. We have two main plans, basic and premium, in addition to a third one, which can be customized depending on the needs of the clients. So the product comes in the form of a thoroughly, of a thoroughly documented ABI and a website, which we, brief, which we briefly went through. Uh, the clients can use the website to register and pay for our services. So the services are not only limited to providing live updates, but they can also produce data sets of text highlights. And we hope it's clear from the list of services in the ABI documentation that it can accommodate a variety of clients. So not only football applications, but also data analysis uh, companies and news reporting platforms. And we are of course open to adding more features and plans in the future, depending on how things go. So uh, these are uh, the references that we used and thank you and we will be happy to take your questions.